Hi YouTube, it's Ivy, and today I thought I would just talk through this little speed paint I recorded. I did this for Patreon this month, and the theme that was the winner was Moonshine. Uh, every month, at least so far, I've made three different mood boards and then let my patrons vote on what the theme of the month is going to be. And I'll show you the winning one up here, I'll put it up somewhere. Uh, so far, you can vote at any tier, so no matter how much you pledge, you can still have a vote. And uh, yeah, so this month's winner was Moonshine, and there was kind of this dreamy, um, sparkly thing happening, and I just thought it would be really fun to paint this whole thing. Um, of course, it is October, so I have been doing a lot of Inktober's leading up to this month and pretty much only working in black and white and not doing any painting for like many weeks <laughs> and um, I really missed it so this month I just really wanted to focus solely on just rendering and painting in the ways that I find the most fun and enjoyable so that's definitely the vibe that's happening this month between all of the other Inktobers that I still have to do. <laughs> but anyways, so this is my lovely lass. Um, so the first thing I did was just a sketch underneath to get the shapes I wanted and everything. And right now I'm effectively doing my line art layer. I know it's not super clean, uh, so that might surprise people that like super clean line art. Sometimes I do do doo-doo. <laughs> she said doo-doo. Uh, <laughs> super clean line art, but uh, not not this time uh, because I know I'm going to paint over all of it. This is a method that I did a lot for all of my like chibi drawings. I pretty much did it like this. It gives you like a really clear line to break up your shapes and everything, but it's not super strict. Like I know a lot of these lines are not going to show up later, so... I did my liner. And right now I'm doing a shading layer. Um, so I know I'm going to put an overlay to color on this. And I've talked about this kind of method that I've been using lately on another video that was a little bit more of an in-depth walkthrough on how I colored when you go from grayscale to color. But uh, yeah, that's that's what we're doing here. And <laughs> just having fun with those wings. This whole painting is almost completely done in just default Photoshop brushes. Basically just the, um, <laughs> the no pressure ab opacity on with various levels of hardness for almost everything. There are just a few texture brushes in here, but for the most part it is done completely with those basic brushes. And here I am doing my colors. Um, these are not final colors most of the time. I just make new layers and get the shapes in. So it's usually pretty messy, but I like it messy. I think it gives it a little bit of a brush stroke kind of texture um, when it's not too clean. And because we have that line art there, it's still going to be broken up pretty much, but uh, it's just, just helps you get those color blocks down real nice. Then I decide on the color palette and I know I want her to have this awesome galaxy skin effect happening where just everything is really shiny and fantasy. <laughs> I do some effects to soften the line art a little bit so it's not quite so harsh. And I'm just doing color edits and stuff like that so that when I start painting, I have a base that I really like the color palette of. Gradient maps give a awesome base to start with. It's just so fun to really have a visible color palette right off the bat. I gave the line art layer a little bit of color in the opposite direction. Of course, most of this whole uh, theme is very blue, so I gave the liner a little bit of a reddish tint. So there was just a little bit of variation in there. I've been doing a lot more pieces that are just kind of one color, sort of monotone-ish, but really I love variety more than that. So if you can introduce a little bit of a different color in there, that's really good for my tastes. I like to have that 
sort of mix in. So I just start on the painting and this is really a process where I just don't get too attached to what I already have down. I just really search for those shapes that I think look good together and just carve that out. I don't even mind if I'm painting over stuff I've already done. It's just really about exploring how I want that flow to work in the end and that pretty gradient into the next thing I love. It's just very satisfying work for me. Probably what makes it the hardest for me to give up painting on my PC versus like the iPad or something is just the accessibility of shortcuts because I am constantly switching my color with X and also color picking constantly with Alt. So giving up those shortcuts is really hard for me to like even get the effect I want because so much of my process is just about like painting over stuff over and over again. Like you can see how many times I switch from dark to light and just paint back over it. <laughs> and I, that really helps speed up my ability to find the shape that I actually really am looking for. Another key thing for me here is that I'm really looking to break up the color blocks very specifically in this one. I mean, this is a stylistic choice, of course. There's times where blending those shapes can also look really cool, but I like that there's like this kind of hard outline around each area that is where it's intentional. Like the dark outline around her face, for example, is like really cool looking to me. I like that there's this cartoony aspect to it. And painting faces, of course, is one of my favorite things. Um, just adding in all those highlights and stuff is like so satisfying. I wanted her skin to have this super glowy effect, like basically as if she was like made of some kind of, I don't know, super sparkly stone, like she's a statue or something, like an orb kind of where like the light shines through it and there's all this sparkle inside of it. I think that's really a hard thing to get. I'm not sure if I'm even like super satisfied with how shiny she is, but I still like how it looks, so I'm not complaining. <laughs> the other thing I love about painting is adding in these little details like that earring just kind of came out of nowhere. Like that's such a freeing thing to be able to just like slap that right on top and not have to worry about editing through the line art or anything, you can literally just paint it right on top. <laughs> that's like one of my favorite things and I really miss that when I'm doing stuff that's more like heavily line art based. For me, painting is a process that's so freeing because everything is molded so much and just really, you can just play with it so much more I feel like and I just love that so much. We're a little bit past halfway through at this point. It starts to become a little bit more obvious what the rendering is going to look like and it's just really cool to see it shift into that. Like when you look at how the hair looks and then that compared to the like unrendered parts is so cool because you start to get excited about like when it all looks like that. At least I do. I'm like, oh my gosh, soon this is all going to be all smooth and pretty and just mm, love it. <laughs> This fabric for me, oh my god, it gave me a hard time a little bit. I <laughs> could not figure out those folds in a way I wanted, but eh, I think it looks okay in the end. One thing I always am keeping an eye on is my navigator. I basically use my navigator as like a thumbnail view more than an actual navigator because um, it just kind of gives you a view of the shapes from much farther away and that's really helpful to me. There are times where I like to do painting that's more like up close, like on her face and everything is more detail oriented, but a lot of the time I'm painting a lot more zoomed out like I am right now where I'm really focusing more on like the overall values rather than like the details because I find that is way more effective and actually like making the piece look good for most of it, except for like your very few key points where you're really drawing the eye. As I work on these arms, and this is actually a really key part to where it's important to look at your thing from far away, because up close, I don't see an issue with them necessarily, but as I look far away, I'm like, it doesn't look right. <laughs> so I swap them and it looks 
way more correct to me. They're still a little bit wonky. I actually didn't use a pose reference for this, so, uh, you know, that's part of <laughs> just the pain of not using references. Sometimes parts of it are just going to look a little wonky, but I think it still works. And once the flip happens, it looks way more natural. And it's so funny how that works sometimes because I couldn't even tell you why it changes so much. It's just, just something about the position of the hands like was not right for her. I'm just adding in all these fun little feathers, really trying to get a little bit of that, I don't know, just like feather gloss. That was one of the things that I loved the most about this prompt was really focusing on like the sheen that dark feathers have. And of course, doing color dodge, <laughs> just adding a different kind of tone in there gives it a little bit, I don't know, I think it's interesting. I'm using some brushes here to get that galaxy effect because I do not have the hand stamina to do every single starry thing individually. <laughs> And I think this is another, it's like color dodge, maybe it's linear dodge, I can't quite see from here, but um, I'm just working on how to get that sort of galaxy effect. It's kind of hard because the whole view of the picture is not super saturated and I don't want it to be. So the galaxy has to be toned down a little bit and it ended up being kind of a yellow highlight instead of like a purple or a blue, which is like more typical for a real galaxy looking effect. but. I think it looks very like celestial and kind of like classy. The last few bits are always the most satisfying. It's just like really crisping it up with accentuating kind of that dark bold outline. Just makes everything pop. It brings in that little bit of cartooniness and of course all the sparkles and details are just like the most fun part, of course. <laughs> Especially for this kind of piece where I know I want it to be like outlandishly sparkly and magical. I am totally going full ham with like the cartoonish stars and everything. Just like, it's my shit. Uh-huh, that's my shit. Um, <laughs> after I do this part, the only thing I'm pretty much going to add is a camera raw filter. This, I like It's like a tongue twister for me. I don't know why I can't say camera raw. But uh, I just discovered this filter like this year and it makes me feel stupid that I didn't know about it before because it's pretty much like all of the adjustment settings except in like one window that you can just like go down the line with and it is so fast and easy. I love all the features of it like going through all the colors with the HSL which is like changing the individual colors, hue, saturation, and lighting. It just makes such a big effect difference. I can't speak, but I love it. So if you've never tried a camera raw filter before, like check it out. That's how I have been finishing my pieces lately. It makes such a huge difference. Thanks guys so much for watching this. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, this sticker is part of my Patreon October parcel set, which includes a sticker sheet, an individual sticker, which is what this is, and a print. They come every month for $15 at the parcel tier. There's also learning tiers, which include exclusive speed paints, works in progress, PSD files, all that kind of fun stuff, and a tip tier for just like wallpapers and fun stuff like that. So check it out. Subscribe if you like. Like me, whatever. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, all places, blah, blah, blah. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye.